spokesperson for the Kashmir National Party and the head of the Diplomatic Committee of the Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Mr. Chairman, friends and colleagues, Assalamu alaikum and very good evening to all of you. I want to thank Mr. Mustafa Kashari and Herbert so directly for inviting me that I can share with my <coughs> title of this conference is Kashmir Past, Present, Way Forward. In my opinion, before we discuss what is the way forward, we need to establish what we mean by Kashmir. By Kashmir, I mean the state of Jammu Kashmir, which existed on 15th of August 1947, and which includes areas known as Azad Kashmir, Gilgit, Pakistan, the Valley, Ladakh, and the Jammu. And Jammu. It is important to point out that all areas of the state are exclusive. It is claimed that the Kashmir is good in the zone are wrong. It is very compl a very complex dispute with many dimensions. And before we propose any solution to this dispute, we need to comprehend all, uh, all different uh, dimensions of the Kashmir dispute. Jammu Kashmir is a multi-religious and multi-ethnic state and there is no danger to Islam or any other religion in the state of Jammu Kashmir. Therefore, Kashmir is not a religious dispute. It is a political dispute which requires a political solution. Two nation theory was only applicable to the British India and did not apply to the princely states including Jammu and Kashmir. This fact was acknowledged by the founder of Pakistan, Mahmoud Ali Jinnah. In a statement issued on 17 June 1947, Mahmoud Ali Jinnah said, and I quote, that after the adapts of Paramahamsi, the Indian states would be constitutionally and legally sovereign states and free to adopt for themselves any course they wished. It is open to the states to join the Hindustan Constituent Assembly or Pakistan Constituent Assembly or to decide to remain independent, unquote. That clearly means that the state of Jammu Kashmir had three options, namely accession to India, accession to Pakistan, or to remain independent. This fact was also acknowledged by the unsip resolution of 13th of August 1948, which stated, and I quote, the government of India and the government of Pakistan reaffirm their wish that the future status of the state of Jammu Kashmir shall be determined in accordance with the will of the people, unquote. It is said that the Kashmiri people Kashmiri people's right of self-determination was curtailed in the next answer resolution, which was passed on 5th of January 1949, which stated, and I quote again, the question of the accession of the state of Jammu Kashmir to India and Pakistan will be decided through the democratic, democratic method of free and impartial plebiscite, unquote. This meant that both India and Pakistan were prepared to grant people of Jammu Kashmir a right to accession not right of self-determination, as right of self-determination also includes right to independence. Since the Shimla Agreement of 1972, both India and Pakistan have transformed this Kashmir dispute as a bilateral dispute, just like many other disputes they have. And all the talks they had on Kashmir always ensured that the people of Jammu Kashmir were not part of the dialogue. Mr. Chairman, the resolution of the Kashmir dispute is essential for the peace and stability of the entire region. It is therefore imperative that Kashmir dispute is resolved in accordance with the wishes of the people of Jammu Kashmir. <coughs> As the people of Jammu Kashmir are the principal party in the Kashmir dispute, we must be part of the dialogue process. Until such time that the Kashmir dispute is resolved, both India and Pakistan should take more Kashmir centric confidence building measures and open all traditional rules linking all parts of the princely state of Jammu Kashmir. Both countries should make easier the travel process that people of the divided state could meet, socialize, and trade with each other. Life, liberty, and fundamental rights of all sections of Jammu Kashmir must be respected, and all political prisoners must be released, and those uprooted by the militancy must be rehabilitated. All parties to the Kashmir dispute should agree that there is no military solution to the Kashmir dispute and make serious efforts to control and disband all those groups that promote religious hatred, intolerance, violence, and terrorism. Both India and Pakistan must show flexibility in their approach to solving the Kashmir dispute, and Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Prasad should also be part of the future negotiations. 
Both countries should allow people to hold regional conferences that the people of Jammu Kashmir to promote peace and tolerance and build bridges of confidence and understanding. Until such time that the Kashmir dispute is resolved, Pakistan should discard Act 1974 and Gilgit Pakistan self empowerment title 2009 and allow Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Pakistan to merge and establish a united. <laughs> Mr. Chair, first of all, I was told that every speaker will be given five to seven minutes, and I finished my speech within seven minutes. Others went down 15 minutes. And I could have said, I mean, I might have written 45 books in booklets on this. I could have spoken on, I could have gone on and on and on. That's one thing. I just wanted to clarify certain points before, you know, if you me. I would still say, two nations theory did not apply to and I let me prove it by action of Mahmoud Rajina. Juna, state of Juna Garwa, I did not lose the majority. Right? And if a two nation theory, laws of two nation theory were applicable to the Supreme States, then that state automatically would have joined India because that two third none of the Muslim majority. Why did Mahmoud Rajina accept the exception of that pass? That itself shows that he believed and he knew that the two nation theory was not applicable. I can give you one example, but that's one in one. Secondly, though I, know, I, mean, I would still say Jammu Kashmir dispute, Kashmir dispute is not an Islamic dispute, a Muslim dispute. It's a problem of this state which future has to be disturbed. If two nation theory was so good, why did this Pakistan you know, become Bangladesh? I mean, don't let me go into the history of that. It's a it is against justice and injustice and oppression. Wherever there is injustice and oppression, whether you are Muslim or Sunni or Shia or whatever, people will fight. If why people are fighting in Balochistan? There's all Muslims. But because of the injustice and oppression there. So two nation theory does not apply. The two nation theory does not resolve any issues. Let me again come to the issues. People say that, oh, we haven't heard this. Just because I haven't heard anything, this uh, issue, an issue doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. For I mean, I would say that tons and tons of evidence against the Marat Partitions in Kashmir. Just because I have read it doesn't mean that it doesn't exist there. In fact, there's too much evidence yeah, there. <coughs> I think the problem is we, why we are still there is because we Kashmiris are undecided. Mm. Despite thousands of deaths and rapes and kidnapping and whatever else. Because we don't know what we want. Some want to join Pakistan, some do want to join India. Others want to become independent. Others want to have Islamic State there. Others want to have a democracy there. Because we are undecided. And again, just because because we are not controlled or governed or uh, occupied by one country. We are occupied by three countries. That is the root cause. But everybody, see, if I, I mean, if I do some media bashing, it helps the cause. I can do that as well. But I know it doesn't help. We have to look forward. We look have to move forward. I know human rights violation takes place on this side as well. But nobody dares to mention that. We, I mean, when we talk about human rights violations, I say, okay, some say 70,000 have died, some say 80,000, 100,000, no one has got the data. My friend over there says, he says that there are no human rights violations, sorry, there are no um, uh, human rights organizations there. Let me tell you that. It was the Indian human rights organization who first highlighted the issue. And they produced data, they produced reports. So please acknowledge something. Okay, if they, India has done something wrong, condemn it. If they kill somebody, condemn it. If somebody hasn't been raped, condemn it. But the issue is that we have presented this as a Muslim issue. It is not a Muslim issue. Let me define the uh, briefly. Valley of Kashmir is Muslim dominated. Jammu is not. Jammu is the Hindu dominated. Ladakh is a Buddhist. Ladakh is a Buddhist. One is Muslim and the other is a Buddhist. How are you going to apply that? Then again, within Gilgit Pakistan and Ladakh, Gilgit has a, although there, there are Shia, there are Sunni, there are Ismailis, so on and so forth. So which Sharia are you going to apply? You are going to divide people on a local lands. You are going to create more problems for the people. Okay? India and Pakistan are, again, you, if you don't like me, you can say that. Let me put it very clearly. Both India and Pakistan are occupiers, and so is China. Right? We, people of Jammu Kashmir, have to decide what is good for us. I don't want to do that, a bureaucrat will do that, and a bureaucrat is not about to sit down and say to me and my you know, other family, you know, family and uh, my uh, other countrymen, say this is good for you. We want to be, we want to be part of the process. Okay, we say India and Pakistan have a role. They have got genuine interests. We will cater for their interests. 
But ultimately, the decision has to be taken by the people of Jammu Kashmir. India and Pakistan can delegate that. But many people have mentioned earlier on, or implemented non implementation of the UN resolution. Incidentally, I have got a copy of the UN resolution of 14 August 1990. Nobody wants to mention that it was Pakistan which refused to withdraw the force. And I read this part 2, section 1. As the presence of troops of Pakistan in the territory of the state of Jammu Kashmir constitutes a material change in the situation since it was represented by the government of Pakistan, before the security council, the government of Pakistan agrees to withdraw its troops from the state. Have they to withdraw? No. No, we have to accept some realities. And then it says in section 2, the government of Pakistan will use its best endeavor to secure the withdrawal from the state of Jammu Kashmir. Uh, uh, tribesmen and Pakistani nationals not normally resident to therein who have entered the state of the uh, purpose of writing. Once that, we have said, if Pakistan had withdrawn, then pa India had to withdraw both of the most majority. Majority could be 55%, 60%, 70%. 70%. So but people are all the here is India is not doing this, India is not doing this. Why not say that Pakistan is also not doing this? If you want, when we say only India is doing it, believe me, the international community, I have been working since 1973, when we only at the peak of a state can become a, like a proxy of Pakistan, people will say that we are uh, promoting or promoting or advancing the policy or agenda of Pakistan. We need to show some, some neutrality that we feel that both India and Pakistan are in control, are the administer of uh, territory, but we want both to get independence from <coughs> both of them. Okay? I can only say what I want. Let the people of Jammu Kashmir decide whether they want to join India, Pakistan, or India. And I think that should be the way forward. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much.